Now it's a lovely still afternoon, very quiet. It's about five o'clock in the evening. The light's getting a little bit milky now. <clears throat> it's been very hot today, but I think the weather's going to change tomorrow. Anyway, everything's still and well watered because it got watered last night. And I've just mown the lawn. The fish have been quite busy. There's one of them just moving under that lily pad. <coughs> Lilies haven't started to come out yet. I hope they will soon, but these irises are. The irises are looking wonderful. Great big fat heads. I do love them when they come out. <coughs> there we are, round here. The roses are looking wonderful on the wall, waiting to come. That's some. Um, Oh, what's it called now? Pillar. It's American pillar. It's a very deep red. I didn't plant it because <laughs> it's not my sort of thing, but actually it looks wonderful. And the lilac's been superb this year. Absolutely the best I remember it. Looking really lovely. And along this wall, we've had a lot of bluebells, many more than there ever used to be. And I think they, they just self-seed. And you can see there's a bare patch just to the right of the, well, to the left. Depends on how you look at it, <laughs> the bench. And that's where I took out an old may bush that was getting very rough and scraggy. Um, and I've been wondering what to put in its place. And I think it might be an avalanche, but I haven't quite got hold of it yet. And with all the garden centres closed, of course, one hasn't been able to do anything about that. But they're going to open again on Wednesday, they say, which is wonderful. The Philadelphus is looking all right. And of course, along the back of the wall and indeed threaded through the lilac is Madame Alfred Carrier. I've got two of them in the garden. That's probably too much for this garden, but anyway, <coughs> I love them. Now I'm just using I just pressed a button on this gimbal and it's refusing to move away from here. I think that's what happens if you, yes, that's right. <laughs> you can, you can play with it and it will move. Um, but it may stay stuck looking at a particular point. <laughs> here we go. Here's the um, Alcamilla coming up underneath the horse, underneath the tang horse. There we are. Now, this is looking a bit of a mess, and that's because the seat, the Raphael seat, that's because I've tried to tone down its extreme whiteness um, with silt from the bottom of the pond. And it looked very good for a while, but now, of course, it's flaking and drying off, drying off and flaking. Um, and as it does so, I'm just going to apply more and more, hoping that it slowly brings the colour down. Um, it's easier than going to get some slurry or something. <laughs> and people talk about yoghurt, but actually there's no yoghurt for sale in the co-op at the moment. It seems to be very popular. So we'll go down this way. Now this bit of the garden is looking quite tidy. I've replanted euphorbia, or any eye here and the other euphorbia, the glacier blues, are looking good. Um, as is the Nepeta coming up and some dill and the old euphorbias that I left behind are looking wonderful. I'll take them all down. I'll do them a, give them a big Chelsea chop this year um, and see how they look for next year. This is all quite tidy. <coughs> I've still got my tripod here because I was recording um, the lesson for the church on uh, Sunday. I had to read the lesson and I had to do it by video so that it could um, be spiced into the video for the service. Anyway, so that's still there. This is um, my only geraniums, pelagoniums. Um, I covered them because of course it was very cold the other night and I've left the cover on 
but they're fine. They're looking good, but it's going to get very cold again on Sunday, tomorrow. So I'm going to put it back and just leave it there. <clears throat> but they look fine. And around here, we've got the usual things on the little table, the altar. I was having tea here just now, having finished mowing the lawn. <coughs> I do enjoy mowing the lawn. I was using the, um, the cylinder mower this time. It does give a better cut, even though it doesn't do the edges and things as well as the rotary. So if I'm really giving it a number one cut, I have to use both. But the lawn's looking not bad, and they're just, they've just about stopped digging it up for nuts. Of course the hazel has been full of nuts um, last autumn and they take them and they stick them in holes all over the lawn and they come and get them back even now. But I think they've probably got enough to eat so they don't dig it up quite as much or they've dug them up. They've dug up all the ones they had. Anyway along here things are coming up nicely. The stashes, the roses, um, I've got a, a pink plant in here, which is one of the ones that came from Curtin Farm. It's a geum, and I didn't think I'd ever grow a geum, and I'm not sure that I should be anyway. Um, but I didn't know where else to put it, <laughs> so it's sitting in there. And I've got a couple of others. There's a salvia here, which is actually quite nice, that purple salvia. And this chap down here, that's another one they produced. Um, and so I've stuck them in there. I'll see how they do. <coughs> Madame Alfred Carrier on the wall is looking wonderful. And the two roses are in good shape. There's Winchester Cathedral and Margaret Merrill. And over here, there is um, there's a white Banksian. It's supposed to scramble up into the tree, but I must tie it up better. It's always getting knocked off by the wind. Now this bed is a disaster, really because I planted it with quite a lot more euphorbia, um, glacier blue, but they mostly all got killed in the winter. I think the winter being so cold and wet for so long and being much more exposed than the ones in that bed, I think they, um, they decided to give up the ghost. So I've been waiting for the garden centres to open so I can get some more to go in there. Um, the alliums look nice, but of course they look pretty skimpy. I've also managed to order a um, an angelica, so that'll take up the missing space there, because they are huge. Um, in fact, there's some little tiny shoots of angelica coming up from the old one, but I don't think they'll do much good. So I'm going to plonk the new one just in that gap. And then we've got some new euphorbia coming up in the corner there. So that's all right. Anyway, the grasses are all looking wonderful, as they always do. They're so trouble-free and uh, interspersed with other things like alcamilla and um, there's a helenium right in front of me, which is a lovely one actually. It's a lovely sort of focal point looking down the garden at the grasses because they're so bright. Now this is all looking good, um, this euphorbia is fine except I'm afraid I didn't put it in quite the right place, <laughs> I should have got it more in the corner. This Vahan is beginning to come out, there's a pink rose on the wall there and I don't know what it is, but this one up here is compassion and there's lots of that luckily. I'm just going to turn this because it seems to be got a mind of its own at the moment and I'm not sure that I'm controlling it very well. There we are. Down below there's the Teucrium looking wonderful with its little uh, stashes mob around its feet. I do love those stashes and look at this Teucrium, isn't it fantastic? There's a lovely blue flower and these gorgeous greeny grey leaves. It's really one of my favourite things. It's not planted in the right place unfortunately but it's, I can't, I can't move it now, it's much too big. This bed's filling out, masses of uh hollyhocks going to come up, 
the hebe, this big bush here, which I cut back almost to the base um, the year before last actually, has struggled back into life and it's actually now looking really good. And I want it to get big again so that it partially covers the entrance to the wildflower meadow, so that makes it look even more mysterious. Um, behind it is a big black bamboo which came in last year and is going to fluff right over here. It's going to look absolutely super, um, but it's in good shape at the moment. And here, isn't this wonderful? I didn't even know I'd got it until it was pointed out to me and it was much smaller about two weeks ago and it's shooting up. It's a teasel and I love teasels. I've always wanted lots of teasels in the wildflower meadow. Um, but this one's growing just outside, just to tease me. And uh, But it'll be fantastic and of course it'll set lots of seed in the autumn and I'll be able to spread them all over this wildflower area. I didn't realise just how sharp the spikes on the back of the teasel are. You can't really see, but they're pretty formidable. Anyway, there we are. Wildflowers are looking good. The um, oxide daisies are coming up soon. I'm not particularly keen on the, the pink, um, but that seems to come out first. But the oxide daisies will slowly take over, which will be good. Now, if I can get this moving, yes it does, I think I managed to keep the controls slightly better now. Um, there we are, all in the afternoon sun. There's another euphorbia in that pot in front of me. And uh, I've been trying to make the present grass grow as well as this particular one, which is really super. I love this one. There were two that were... Oh! Hang on a minute, something's happened to my thing and it's gone all silly. Come on, don't be silly. Right. Um, this pheasant grass, one of two, sort of almost died off a winter or two ago and I replanted them. Well, they did right die off. I replanted them last year and, this, and it's struggling to make its mark really. But I've cut out all the dead stuff and give them a lot of, give them a lot of feed and I think it's going to be all right um, but you can see it's nowhere near as nice as the big one and they're particularly fine plants they do very well they give a lovely color to them right the rest of it's looking good I won't go through them all but they're in very good shape and as for the alcamilla it absolutely loves this Oh, hang on a minute, stop doing that. Look at you, you've got a mind of your own. The alcamilla gets huge in here. Around the back, I've never taken a lot of notice of this bed, really. It's got a big um, evergreen honeysuckle on the front, on the frame, and it's got a peony, um, and it's got some Christmas roses. It's got another bamboo now down the back. It's the same as the black bamboo that I showed you just now, but this is a much less impressive specimen. I've tried watering it a lot, but um, one day it'll look superb. It'll fluff right over the top of this summer house, but at the moment it looks a little bit weak. <clears throat> the Christmas rays is looking good. I must cut the flowers off actually because um, they, need, <laughs> they need cutting off. <laughs> They're not looking so good anymore. The box is fantastic as always. Now, the orchard, I'm so pleased with the orchard this year. It's one of the things I really love the most now. This damson is covered in fruit. It's going to be really full. I haven't had any fruit off here for three or four years although I did make jam about four or five years ago. But there are lots and lots and lots of fruit, which is wonderful. And in fact, all of the trees have got fruit. The Victoria plum at the back and the Tsar over there has got fruit. Oh, look, there's a robin perched on the branch just on the left. I'm not 
moving so that it won't be frightened away as you can see it. It's actually helping I think because that tree has got um, something is curling the leaf so maybe it's finding something to eat. I haven't got any sprays and things at the moment <coughs> so I can't control that. Um, the rose Felicite et Papitu is looking fabulous on the damson. These apple trees were all covered in blossom this year and this one too. They're both James Grieve I think and there's a <coughs> and there's a trachylus spermum scrambling up it which look nice. This cherry is looking good and it's got one or two cherries waiting to come which would be great. I haven't seen any cherries on this tree before so it's great. The green gauge has got one or two green gauges but only one or two. I don't think we'll get much off it but I do look forward to that. I think green gauge is wonderful. And this tree the Mirabelle, I'm afraid, has yet again got attacked badly and I don't have any spray for it. Um, I did put the hose on it for about half an hour a couple of days ago to see if giving it lots more water would give it enough strength to fight off whatever has got at its leaf. Probably won't make any difference, but it has got a few fruit and I hope we might get a few of those wonderful yellow um, Mirabelle plums this year. We'll see. <clears throat> the pear always does well. It's fine. It's very happy. And there at the back, over the top of the shed, um, apart from the petiolaris on the wall, is this huge black bamboo which I planted about six years ago. So that's what the bamboos down the end of the garden will look like after two or three years. And of course there we are, you see, you can see the light across the grass. I do love it when it's mown. I've always wondered whether to leave some of this grass long and cut paths through it, but I don't think it's quite big enough for that. I think you need a bigger sway swathe of grass to, to make paths in long grass. So I cut it close and it's pleasingly velvety. Although the quality of the grass isn't particularly great, but it's, it's enough for me. Anyway, quick look at the borrowed landscape and the slightly milky sun. But it's, it's all fine. But look, I do have another geranium. There's a, an everlasting geranium over there in the middle, down by the urn. There we are. So we're now going back. Let's see if I can control this thing better. I'm really not very good at it. Come along. There, I'll turn it that way and then turn it this way. There we are. Look down the garden. Come on, look down the garden. I must practice this a bit more before I do a video for the NGS, which I promised to do. Right, then we're walking back up towards the house underneath the hazel. Immediately the temperature changes, it's gone all lovely and cool and fresh. It's so pleasing the hazel, it really is. It's such a lovely thing. I guess any tree would have the same effect, but it just happens to have the right shape and feel to it. So there's all the box lined up in front of the house. All doing well, I'm glad to say. I don't seem to, I've had a bit of trouble with the box but only a few of them have been nibbled and I just march on and feed them well and hope that if they, it goes away I'm not giving up on them yet although quite a lot of people have. Um, that Portuguese laurel, the round headed laurel has been trimmed beautifully and that looks very good. The wisteria has been very good this year and of course this wall of mixed ivies and vines and things as an absolute magnet for the blackbirds who go in and out all the time to find their nests. And of course the, the uh, quince has really come on again this year. It's, um, it's a very fine tree. It's been cut back quite hard so it doesn't get too big but the shape is lovely. It's got a lovely sort of um, teacup shape now. 
and the flowers are very pretty. You get this, well, they're going over now, but they're lovely and lovely light pink going to white. So that's fine. Then we go back up here, the choice here. Always need to cutting back all the time, otherwise I can't get down the path. My barbecue where I often have supper these days. Great big choice here. Sorry, no, a great big Senecchio behind. I do love Senecchio. I know it's not called Senecchio anymore, but I don't care. Um, the Daphne is looking really well. That was stunning this year, it really was. And I've given it a huge water just to keep it happy. And all these little box balls are looking really good. You can see them shining in the evening light. It's so nice when they do that. On the back is, um, is um, Hydrangea Seamanii, which is doing awfully well, and it's going to cover both those walls in time. I've never seen it out. It hasn't been out in my time, but maybe this year it will be. It's got a nice white flower. Down on the ground, this Hebe is looking very well. It's sort of vaguely Japanese on <laughs> this gravel, but... Um, there we are. Now you can see through down the garden under the laurel tree. My beautiful horse's head. Just catching the evening light. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Everyone's always intrigued by the mirror. Absolutely enveloped now with ivy. And the cypresses are looking pretty good. I've at last tied the cypress to the wall so it doesn't get blown around. And this palmy thing, this ferny thing is looking quite nice. I haven't yet brought all the garden furniture out, so my usual seats haven't come out of the garage yet to fill that area, but I probably won't do that till towards the end of May. And there's the pond couple of nice English lavenders on either side and I think my peony Duchesse de Nemours is breaking through the surface. A lot of people's peonies are really out but this is in such shade that it comes much later than most others. So there we are, garden looking nice on a May evening about, what's the time now? Yes it's about quarter to six in the evening. Lots of bird song. The bird song has been wonderful, hasn't it? Because there's been less competing noises anywhere. Okay. Bye bye now. Bye bye.